Pembrokeshire and Cardiganshire are adjoining historical agricultural counties in southwest Wales. Welsh corgis were cattle herding dogs, the type of herding dog referred to as healers, meaning that they would nip at the heels of the larger animals to keep them on the move. The combination of their low height off the ground and innate agility of Welsh corgis would allow them to avoid the hooves of cattle. The term corgi means either cur dog or dwarf dog in the Welsh language, which was not intended as an insult to the dog's size, rather as a purely descriptive term. Are corgis born with tails? It's a distinct physical feature that helps people distinguish between the two breeds of corgi. Cardigan Welsh corgis are known for their long full-length tails, while Pembroke Welsh corgis are known for being the breed of corgi without a tail. It's not uncommon for people to assume that Pembroke Welsh corgis are born without tails since so many of them are tailless. However, Pembroke Welsh Corgis are born with long full-length tails nearly identical to Cardigan Welsh Corgi tails. Pembroke Welsh Corgis will have their tails docked shortly after they are born. In countries that do not allow tail docking, Pembroke Welsh Corgis will keep their full-length tails. Why do corgis have their tails docked? Pembroke Welsh corgis will have their tails docked to meet the breed standard. A breed standard is a written description of characteristics describing an ideal example of the breed. As per the official standard of the Pembroke Welsh corgis tail docked as short as possible without being indented. Occasionally a puppy is born with a natural dock which if sufficiently short, is acceptable. A tail up to two inches in length is allowed, but if carried high tends to spoil the contour of the top line. To adhere to the standard, most Pembroke Welsh Corgi puppies will have their tails docked to breed standard length. The origin of tail docking in Pembroke Welsh Corgis. The origin of tail docking in Pembroke Welsh Corgis is mostly speculative. When we look back at the history of the breed, Pembroke Welsh Corgis, for the most part, have always had their tails docked. At one time, it was greatly encouraged within the breed to try and only produce puppies with naturally no tails. However, this proved to be much easier said than done. More often than not, litters contained far more tailed puppies than tailless puppies. Some puppies were even born with half-length tails or long stumps. Is it humane to dock corgi tails? The docking of tails is a controversial topic not only in the United States, but all over the world. Much of the world, including Australia and most parts of Europe, have outlawed it, while countries like the United States and Canada continue the practice of tail docking and ear cropping. The AKC states Tail docking is performed shortly after birth when the puppy's nervous system is not fully developed. As a result, the puppy feels little to no pain and there are no lasting negative health issues. Some lawmakers have sought to require anesthesia for these procedures. However, since they are performed so soon after birth, anesthesia should not be required 
as this could be life-threatening for the young puppy. Waiting until they are old enough to handle anesthesia would actually result in a more painful and traumatic procedure. Much of the opposition regarding these procedures comes from a misunderstanding of why and how they are performed. Many believe that these procedures are painful, performed purely for convenience or cosmetic reasons, and have no value. This is completely false. In fact, these practices are significantly less painful and much less physically traumatic for the dogs than common surgeries such as spaying and neutering. Each of these procedures is a safe, humane standard practice that serves a practical purpose, and in the case of tail docking, preserves a dog's ability to perform its historic function. Conversely, others suggest that tail docking is painful and inhumane mutilation. They claim that evidence indicates that puppies have similar sensitivity to pain as adult dogs. Docking a puppy's tail involves cutting through muscles, tendons, as well as severing bone and cartilage connections. It is also argued that a dog's tail serves a critical role in social behavior, and by docking tails, you are removing a major communication tool between dogs. But now,